Welcome to this Data 13 Introduction to Data Management video. In this video, we'll discuss several of the most basic functions and commands used in Stata 13, including data importing, data management, do files, summary statistics, and data manipulation codes. So first, let's start with importing our data into Stata. There are many ways you can import your data, but for now, we're just going to focus on the two easiest methods. It's important to remember that Stata can only read files in .dta format. Um, Data files from other statistical software packages such as SPSS are saved in .sav or .por file formats and must first be reformatted to .dta through programs like R or Stat Transfer. Uh, but for now, we're just going to assume that you've collected and organized your data in Excel so we don't have to go through the hassle of reformatting data from another program. The first way to import your data into Stata is simply by copying and pasting it. So we'll go to our Excel sheet where it's already selected and copied. And we'll minimize that. We'll go to our data editor here in Stata. And we just paste. And we want to treat the first row as variable names because that's the way it appears in the Excel spreadsheet. And voila, then you're done. So we close out of here. Uh, there's also another way to import your data. So first we'll use the clear command and you'll notice the variables pane here when we hit enter disappears. Now we are working from scratch. We have no data in Stata. We'll go to file, import, Excel spreadsheet. We will browse our computer for our data. We will check this box, import first row as variable names and we hit OK. And there's our data. So once you have all of the data in Stata that you want to use, the first thing that you always want to do is start a do file. And that's up here. Um, do files are really important because they allow you to enter a long string of commands without actually manipulating the original data itself. Um, so we'll start our line with a asterisk, which lets Stata know that this isn't a command, and we can name this something like example data do file, and then we end that with a star. So we can go down here and we can do lots of weird things, like we can sort our variable by, or we can sort our data by a variable like condition. Um, we can drop lots of different variables like race, we can drop ideology, we can do all of these weird things, um, but it won't actually happen until we hit do. So now that we've ran do, you can see that the results have populated here in the results pane. Um, and now our variables are gone. And you know, when you use the drop command, those variables are gone forever. So it's really important that if you're using the drop command, you're only using it in a do file. Uh, once you're done with your do file, you'll save it here. And you can call it whatever you want. Uh, we're not going to save this one because we're actually not going to use a do file, just so you can see how all the data works um, and all the commands work. So we're going to exit out of here, not save. We're going to clear. And you can come up here to the command pane where we originally imported our data hit enter and everything has is back has repopulated in the pane and we're good to go. So now that we understand how to import our data and create do files, we can actually start analyzing our data. Uh, so the data that we have here was actually collected from Georgia State University students who took a survey gauging their attitudes on juvenile and adult solitary confinement. Uh, some students were exposed to an experimental condition before taking the survey and others were not. So that is denoted by this variable up here called condition. Uh, if we want to learn a little bit more about condition, some of the uh, best commands to use are summarize. So we can summarize condition. And summarize gives us a lot of really cool information like the number of observations, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, and things like that. Uh, but we can tell that this is a dichotomous variable. And when we want to analyze dichotomous variables or other ordered variables, it's better to use the command tab, which creates a tabulation of that variable. So we hit tab condition, 
And now we see that out of 197 respondents, 101 were in the control, which was coded as zero, and 96 were in the experiment, which was coded as one. You can also tab multiple variables at the same time to give you a cross tabulation. So we can tab condition and we can tab female. Now we can see the breakup of gender within each condition in our data. So we can see that um, there were a total of 66 men, which was coded as zero, and 130, which was coded um, as one for women. Uh, but sometimes it's not very intuitive to look at all of the zeros and ones and make sense of that. And that's where the command label really comes in handy. So let's learn label. Uh, first, we have to create the label that we will later apply to the variable. So we enter label, and then we want to define um, what we're going to call that. And I like to define the label the same as uh, whatever variable I'm creating the label for. So we're going to call this label con condition. Um, now we're going to specify what we want the labels to be. So we know that zero means no, no treatment, but we can call it control if that's easier. So this is the control group. And then one, um, we can say that this is um, the treatment, okay? Um, so we hit enter, and then we want to label values. Uh, and this applies the label to the variable. So first you enter the variable, which is condition, um, and then you enter the label definition, which is condition. So it's always, it's, it's basically impossible to mess up your, uh, your labels to your values because you've basically created the same thing. So we hit enter, and now we hit tab condition again. And now we can see that it's much easier to read. We can see that there's control and the treatment and you know how many people were in each one. Let's do the same with female. Uh, we're going to label define female as zero equals male, one equals female, and don't forget there is that two for other. Um, we hit enter and then we label values female female. Now we can do our original cross tab we can come up, I think it was this one, uh, tab condition and female. Now we can see that this is much easier to read. Um, that female, female up there might be a little complicated, so we can actually create labels for the variable name it itself. So we can use the command label variable female as gender. And now if we hit page up, twice. It reruns that command for us. And now it's much easier to read. We can see how many males were in the control, how many females were in the control, and so forth. Uh, it's, it's much easier to read than that original cross tab that we had. Uh, furthermore, if you'd like to know the percentages of, um, you know, each group, uh, you know, uh, the percentage or the proportion of males that were in the control versus females, we can add this option on here, column and row. And now we have uh, percentages that are really easy to read. Uh, so there's lots of different things that you can do with tabs, uh, lots of different options and things like that that just makes it really easy to get a simple snapshot of the data that you're working with. So we've talked about some uh, the command sum, tab, and label. Uh, the last three that I want to talk about are generate, rename, and recode. So generate is a really easy variable to use. Uh, and, and typically I'll create variables based upon other variables, so I don't have to alter that original data. Uh, so let me give you an idea what I'm talking about. So let's say I want to generate a new variable on party ID. So I generate new party ID equals my pre-existing variable that's already called PID. Okay, um, now I can sum new PID right next to PID, and that shows you that I have basically created a duplicate variable. 
Now let's tab new PID and see what exactly it is we're working with. So we see we have seven categories. Um, I can tell you because I've worked with this data before that um, you know this is a seven point scale of party identification where one equals uh, a strong Democrat and seven goes all the way up to strong Republican where four is um, four is independent. So let's go to the rename variable. Say I really don't like new PID and it's really confusing. Uh, I can rename it uh, whatever, literally anything, like party ID. Um, or I have to enter the first one. So new PID equals new party or whatever I want to call it. So this is exactly the same. All we've done is change the name. Uh, but now let's say that I'm kind of unhappy with the code. There's lots of things that I can do with the command recode. I can say recode new party. Um, let's say I don't like that there are independents in this sample, which is coded as four. And I can uh, tell Stata to reset that to missing values. So I put in a period here for missing values. Now, when I tab new party, you'll see that that four is gone and my observations have gone from 197 uh, to 133. Uh, you can also change the, the values that are in there to new numbers. So we can recode new party, say we want seven to equal 100 or we want one to equal zero. Literally whatever you wanna do, hit enter and it shows you the 17 changes have been made. Uh, we tab new party again and here you can see that our values, um, you know, uh, the number or the values that we've given to correspond to the data have changed. Um, so these are just a few examples of some of the most basic Stata commands that I think everyone should know um, their first time using Stata. Uh, if you have any questions, don't forget you can always email me at klaplant one at gsu.edu. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching.